during the sand bath a little bit. I still have a lot of pots running around. I like the flexibility of the magnetic mounts, but at the same time, Say hello to my little pimple right here. <laughs> Today's mission is to pick up either one or even two Lytale Amphias, depending on their condition and whether they're eating at the store or not. As you know, I got three Lytale Amphias in the 145 gallon tanks already. One of them turned into a male. So right now the ratio is slightly skewed towards a male. Ideally, I should have one or two females. The second thing I want to pick up is actually conch. So I need some sand stir for the 145 gallon tank. As you know, the dino flagellant really decimated my cleanup crew. And now that the dino is receding and different kind of algae is coming in, I want to keep those algae in check as well. I'm really going in there for the tiger conchs to stir the sand bed a little bit. Not so much that it's going to spread the dino like crazy, but just enough to be dangerous. If you're seeing this intro, I guess the visit to the fish store is going well. So I'll see you uh, later on in this video. Beautiful fish. One day, one day, I want to get a large enough tank. Would love to keep a pair of these guys. All right, guys, we're gonna go for the conks. So I found one cent tiger conk, second cent tiger conk, and you have a nice size fighting conk right back there. So we're gonna do that. One, two, three. One hour later. First up, we got what we went there for conks. And right here, we got two tiger sand conks and also one nice and large fighting conks. So I'm hoping that these guys will help stir the top layer of the sand bed gently. Doesn't really make a big mess and spread the dino everywhere, but just enough. And it would be amazing. Amazing if they start consuming the dinoflagellant, especially the amphidelium, who is not actually that toxic. But even if they don't eat the dinoflagellants, they'll help with stirring the sand bath a little bit, as well as eat the other type of algae, like hair algae, diatoms, and hopefully maybe even cyanobacteria, even though that's not algae. Counting on these guys, and if they happen to really clean out the sand bed, I can always just rehome these guys easily. All right, this next back here is really special. I have never seen this fish before, whether it's in person or online. So when I saw this, I was totally taken back about how beautiful it is actually in the store. This guy I have never actually seen in person or even online. It is a circus goby. At the fish store when Joseph and I were just kind of looking around, we saw a pair of twin spot gobies at this tank that he picked up and then this guy just darted out. Beautiful, beautiful little goby that I've never seen before. Let's go ahead and get it because as you know in the 145 gallon tank I've been kind of collecting different kinds of uh, gobies. I got the hyphen gobies in there, I got the neon gobies in there, got the yellow line goby and I also got a really cryptic uh, white spotted goby from uh, Seahorse Zavi. And I thought this guy would make a fantastic addition. Uh, I was debating whether to add this guy to the 135 or the mangrove tank. Uh, of course, in the mangrove tank, I'll see him probably more. In the 135, there's a really good chance that I'll just drop him in and I'll rarely see him again, just like the uh, white line goby. But although the white line is getting a lot bolder now, but this guy is supposed to be really cryptic as well. But like I mentioned at the fish store, I was looking at this guy and I just totally fell in love. And uh, since I saw that Joseph's not picking this guy up, I figured, you know what, let me pick him up. And uh, between the two tank, I'm gonna add this guy to the 135 because the 135 has a mesh top and in the mangrove I have Mangai Cardinals already which also have similar stripe patterns so I don't want to uh, I don't want them to look too similar. One thing that you cannot really get a sense of is how large his fins are. It's almost flowy. It's really really cool. Almost like a panda. Well panda with stripes. Maybe zebra? But the reason I think that he's at risk of jumping because like at the fish store, he always like to hide kind of like upside down at the, uh, they got Euro brace. It's like right underneath the water surface. That makes me a little nervous. And that's one of the main reasons why I want to keep him in the 145 gallon tank. Uh, number one, nice mash top. So he won't be able to jump out just in case he stick too close to the water surface. And number two, because uh, recently the 145 went through a nutrient bloom. Everything is back under control now, but I still have a lot of pots running around. So even if it's not, taking prepared food like flake, pellets, or frozen food, which I think he is, uh, according to the people working there at the fish store. In case it's not, there are a lot of pods for this guy to hunt uh, as he settled into the tank, which I hope will be pretty quickly. An inch, inch and a half is actually a really good size for this fish. Uh, according to what I find online, it seems like they grow up to two inch or two and a half inches. So this guy is pretty big. So we got a couple big conks. Uh, first, we got a fighting conk from the uh, Ricks. Oh, look at this guy right here. Lively, which is good. And then we've got two smaller conks, and these are the sand tiger conks, and I have a lot of experience with them. The great little cleanup crew, also really efficient. Is they flip, Joel? Yeah. Wow. And you see, there are a lot of uh, cyanobacteria and algae on the glass. I purposely yeah. not scrape them so that they can compete with the dinoflagellant. Next, we're gonna release the fish, and I think like because Neon like this fish so much, I'm gonna release it with him together. Oh, let me wash my hands. <laughs> no, 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 no. What the? <laughs> Somebody. Hey, come on. Ah! Okay, so it's really weird. I mean, like, Leon always liked fish. He was sitting in front of the tank and pointing the fish. But specifically for this one, 
He just reacts so strongly towards him. Look at that. You, you. I don't think we're gonna see this fish yeah. often. This is this fish is supposed to be really cryptic. Me, I keep saying, yeah, that's you. Um, he just won't eat it. Wait, I thought you were going to let him to release it. I can't hold on to it. I'm holding on to Leon, and I'm doing it in proxy of Leon. Alright, let's see. There he goes. Oops. Gone. Oh, here. Yep, there he goes. And really quickly, I'm sure is gonna find somewhere to hide, and that's it. Nah. We'll not see him again for quite a while. Mm -hmm. This guy's supposed to be really cryptic. Beautiful fish, right? Look at that. I think it's really dirty, but again, all the fish is perfectly healthy, super fat. They're hiding right now because we we're making such a commotion. But uh, fish is all doing gorgeously well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, what is that? She's like, oh. I thought that was your favorite fish. What happened? <laughs> all right, well, we're going to leave the fish alone and um, yeah. yeah. The next thing you know, he got eaten. Oh, jeez, man. <laughs> I think my biggest fear is it's swimming into a uh, sea anemone or something like that. That would be terrible. I think. Now it just kind of, I think it's going to dash around for a little up. bit. <laughs> oh boy. Look at the fins. Look how beautiful the finage is. Crazy, right? All right, we're going to give this guy some time to settle in and not stress him anymore. I'm going to put the mesh top back on and hopefully we'll see him again. Two days later. Hey, what's up, Reefers? Today's mission is to upgrade a piece of equipment that I don't always talk about, but I use pretty often. And that is the desktop media reactor from Innovative Marine. I got this little tiny media reactor for my 17 gallon drop off tank a couple years ago. Over the years, it has served me really, really well. This tiny little media reactor, even though I don't usually like to run media heavy handedly, is simply a little bit too small. I'm gonna give you my impression of this piece of gear in terms of the uh, usability as well as the product design aspect of it. Uh, and then we're gonna talk about the new one that I picked up from Aquamax, uh, the FRS Media Reactor. As you know, with the 145 gallon tank, currently I'm fighting high nitrate, high phosphate, especially after the blackout. I think like the macroalgae or dinoflagellate just kind of spit all the nutrient back in the water and things just spiked. For nitrate, I've been relying on water change, which is ah, not super effective. And for the phosphate, I've been running GFO, which also is not too effective due to the small size of the media reactor uh, versus is the water volume. So at the same time using media reactor, I'm also leaning on phosphate E, which works. But this also means that I have to remember the dose and also calculate the dosing amount. So I figured to keep things a little bit more consistent um, and to also address the nitrate issue, I would try the Brightwell Purit. Uh, this will take out all kinds of contaminants and that includes the nitrates and also phosphates. By the moment, phosphate I can manage, the nitrate is a little bit tougher. That's why I'm leaning on uh, Purit to see if it makes a difference. Well, first thing first, I've been doing nitrate tests and phosphate tests uh, every day, so keep track of the trend. Uh, so this morning is no difference. I'm gonna do a test first and then we'll swap out the media reactor. Well, first guys, let's look for the rainbow. Oh, there it is, let's have some coffee. All right, nitrate, this is 25, this is 12. I'll call these uh, 20. Phosphate came back at 0.15, which is not terrible. I wanna aim for 0.05, anything under 0.1 I'll take. So there's definitely a case for continuing to run the media reactor. I need to bring both nitrate and phosphate down. First of all, for Aquamax, uh, I am not sure what their relationship with Marine Depot is, but Marine Depot carries a lot of their stuff. It's almost like the house brand. And I just noticed, made in Taiwan, uh, they already score a lot of bonus points. Huge fan of Taiwan. I'm half Taiwanese, actually. Over the years, I've actually accumulated a lot of gears from Aquamax. It seems to be like a value conscious quality brand. For example, this fantastic tank right there, Aquamax. All right, starting off, I'll just say that I'm not a huge fan of the packaging. I know they're trying to go with the cardboard, maybe the eco-safe style, but um, I guess I just appreciate the more polished packaging. I do like the fact that at least they insert the instruction into a little sleeve right here. Let's see, it's actually pretty. All right, just one piece, not much to unbox. That was it. I think in terms of packaging, they're doing the uh, no nonsense kind of deal, which is fine. I do wish the unboxing is more of an experience, but of course I know that with uh, more budget conscious products, that's usually not part of the design process. So that's fine, as long as the product is good. The unit does feel like quality. I mean, it's not top, top tier because like with the innovative marine one, when I pulled up, it's so intricate, the material is so well tooled. I was like, man, this is quality. In terms of actual tooling, 
for some of the parts that I see, these seems to be acrylic. I feel like it is probably one step below the um, Innovative Marine Media Reactor. However, it's really slight. It's still really, really good. Acrylic is acrylic for the tube. But it's, I'm talking more about like the white portion right here. I can see this fine groove and stuff. It's just not 100% perfectly mirror finish, which to be honest, it's not a big deal because it's gonna sit in the sump anyway. So as long as this product is good, I'll be happy. The pump though, definitely looks a little bit better than the Innovative Marine one. It's also a little bit smaller as well. And the adjustment dial is large and simple to turn, which is good. But here is the big differentiator between the two media reactor, the Innovative Marine versus the Aquamax. It's this guy right here. This is how the media reactor is gonna sit in this sump. This one uses magnets. So you can slide it up and down. And I see that it actually has an O-ring here so that it grips the sump a little better. It won't slide as easily, which is a smart design. But one thing I'm scared about using magnet in the tank is that if the salt water is able to seep through the seal, then the magnet is gonna expand, it's gonna crack. But before the magnets swell to the point that you can see the crack, it's probably already leaching stuff into the tank. So um, it looks like the magnet is completely encased. I do not see any seam at all. But time will tell how this performs. But I do really, really, really like the design using magnets. So uh, you can really fine tune where it sits in the water. I like big, but I cannot, not, no, no, no. I do like the quick twist in order to get the cap off. I feel like that's really convenient. However, I feel like the innovative marine uh, design of having a tube inside this little sleeve where you can just turn and pull out the tube, that's way easier to remove and change the media. Versus this one, now you have to take the whole thing out. Uh, so I think that's one point towards the innovative marine. But for the price point of 60 some dollars, I feel like you can't really beat it. I wouldn't mind doing this maybe once a week. On the left, we've got the Aquamax, and on the right, we've got the Innovative Marine. This is the smallest size. The rim is adjustable to this thickness as well as the height. You can screw this ring and you shift the entire cylinder up and down based on your water level. In terms of pump, we got a little pump at the bottom of the cylinder. <laughs> it sounds like a rapper's name. And we got a little slider to control how powerful the pump should be. And this pump is not that powerful, nor is probably that one, because for the most part, media reactor, you don't want to really blast water through the medias um, but you do have a slider to control the amount of water flow that goes into this right here between dismounts and dismounts I like the flexibility of the magnetic mounts but at the same time I like the fact that with this kind of mount I do not have the risk of having a magnet inside the tank that go rusted so if I were to say the secret sauce for this media reactor is a magnetic mount so that give me the freedom to mount anywhere the secret sauce for the Minimax media reactor is definitely the cylinder in the middle. As you can see right here, it slides off really easily. It's not locked in, just kind of be placed in there. And this reminds me of like the RDI cartridge. So basically this is a cartridge for media. So inside the Minimax, you have four sponges, two on each side, same as the Aquamax one. If you're using GFO, something a little bit finer, you want both for carbon, could use both or maybe just use one. In terms of capping off the media cartridge, we've got a nice little stopper with some holes drilled in. Uh, got two O-ring in here. There's no screw or anything like that. You just kind of pop it in and the O-ring just kind of hold it in place and keep the seal. So for this innovative marine media reactor, I really, really like how easy it is to replace the media. You don't have to stop the pump or anything like that. You just pull this out and that's it. And the other interesting thing about this media reactor is that you can tune the flow that goes into the media chamber uh, two ways. Number one, of course, like the pump that we mentioned. Number two, as you rotate the inside cylinder, it actually changes how much flow goes in, goes through the media. Between these two media reactor, I do feel like the uh, Innovative Marine one is a bit more feature rich and I do like it. However, in terms of sizing, I like the size of this. It just fits my needs. It's a little bit shorter, a little bit fatter, so it holds a little bit more media. And I like the fact that I can move up and down with this uh, magnetic mount, even though it has that uh, underlying risk of maybe the magnet going bad inside the tank. But either way, both of these media reactors are fantastic. It's just that for the spacing, Aquamax wins out and I want to give something new a try. The Innovative Marine Media Reactor is much more refined, has a lot of nice features, but also a little bit more expensive. The Aquamax, however, is really value conscious, great, great price, and I think like the dimension it comes with is fantastic as well. Depending on the dimension as well as the mounting area that you have, either one is gonna be a fantastic choice. I think upon seeing this one, I'm leaning a little bit more towards the Innovative Marine uh, Minimax Media Reactor. 
uh, but we'll see how this one performs. This one's a little bit more complicated, but I feel like also makes maintenance a little bit easier and just more refined. This one is no nonsense. I assume just simply gonna work. It's a really, really simple machine. This one, again, is more complicated looking, but this one's also like 20 bucks cheaper. So there's a trade off. If I were to choose again, without seeing how this one performs, I think I would probably just show a little bit more and just get the Innovative Marine uh, Mini Max, the updated version and probably one size larger. But who knows, maybe this one will surprise me in terms of performance. So we're gonna load it up pop it in and we'll, we'll see how this one performs. Two weeks later. As expected, it works beautifully. No complaints, it has been reliable, which I expect it to be because it's like a really simple contraption and with a really reliable pump. In terms of daily operation, I don't really expect any issue from this because it is such a simple machine. Uh, it just push water through the cone and it comes out of the top, that's it, really simple, uh, which is also a good thing because like, if you need to maintain it, you know exactly how it works and it's super easy. The downside of that is that when I do need to change media for carbon, which is about two or three weeks, I do need to remove the whole unit, which means also kind of like I'm plugging the plug and routing it over the water or I have to kind of use a bucket over the sump and kind of change it over all the water which is kind of goofy so in that aspect I do prefer the uh, innovative marine where it has a outside sleeve and a cone where I can just pull the cone out and do my thing with the media and then just slap it back in the second thing is that now that I'm thinking about it I do kind of wish that I went with a larger media reactor because with a larger media reactor I have the option to use less media and just leave empty space um, so for, for times where where I need a lot of media, I have that option versus the smaller one, I'm kind of packed into this size. I have this thought because as I was shoving carbon into here, I was like, mm, maybe it would be nice to have a little bit more. Uh, but then again, I use both sponges on both sides. With carbon, I usually only need one. So I think like next round, I'll just use one sponge and I should have enough. But again, this is severely undersized for my tank, but that's just kind of my style because I don't usually run media. And when I do run media, I'm pretty light-handed versus just slapping everything on, so that works. However, again, counterpoint is that if I do end up using uh, more media, I don't have to run the media reactor 24 seven. I can run a couple hours a day and that would be it. After we're using this for a week and a half, trying to imagine how I'll change our media and stuff like that, um, I think if I were to do it again, I will probably go with the um, Innovative Marine Minimax, the medium size, free milliliter. Number one, having to unplug and take the whole unit to sink kind of sucks compared to just pulling out the uh, center media holder cylinder and just do that and plop it back in. I think that's way, way easier. And number two, uh, I do get 50 milliliter more media. I know I set out to get like a small media reactor, but after seeing how much carbon I can actually shove in this guy, um, I think a larger volume would be nice, even though I don't usually use a lot of media, but just having that little bit more option, that'd be kind of cool. So I think if I were to do it again, I'll probably go with the uh, Innovative Marine one. That is not to say this is not a good one. This is a really nice one as well, really well built. I mean, reliable so far, and I don't expect it to fill because the only really moving parts is the pump and they have a really, really nice pump. Ultimately, I think the convenience of changing out the media uh, really wins it for me, um, even though this one can be conveniently placed anywhere. Uh, in fact, right now it's in the refugium chamber, which I don't think is ideal because every time I add something or blow up anything in the uh, refugium section, it gets sucked into the pump. I think after the next time I change out the media, I'll just move the uh, reactor to here. That's actually a really nice spot for it. Easy to access and um, the return pump is gonna catch all the particulates uh, if they get stirred up and whatnot. But bottom line, this reactor is simple and clean. It works versus the innovative marine one, a little bit more expensive, but more feature rich. And between the two, I'm leaning more towards the innovative marine one after trying both. And right now, even though nitrate is still hovering around 1520, phosphate has dropped to 0.05 to 0.05. Point one, depending on how much I feed that day. So I believe between using purates and periodically a little bit of phosphate E, I'm able to bring the phosphate down. So right now, this tank is sitting at a pretty nutrient level. In fact, for the last week or so, the dinoflagellant has completely stopped growing and even receding a little bit. But this video is about media reactor. We'll talk about dinos in the future. I hope this video has been helpful, if not at least entertaining. If so, leave a like and drop me a comment. I'll see you next Sunday at 12, 13 p.m. sharp.